South Downs Way, running from Eastbourne to Winchester, allows us the chance to see such sights as the Long Man of Wilmington. Living in the south of England, we're also very lucky that stretching west from Eastbourne is one of England's most iconic coastlines. The roof of Cookmere winds its way through the Downs and joins at sea at Cookmere Haven on the west side of a line of chalk cliffs known as the Seven Sisters. Here the sea moves the shingle on the beach eastwards and if left to itself would block the mouth of the river so it's kept open by dredging and the use of timber walls. Moving further to the east is Beachy Head. Back in the 20s, Eastbourne Council was wise enough to buy several thousand acres here to stop development, which has led to it becoming part of the South Downs National Park. Over 500 feet, they're the highest chalk cliffs in England and are regularly subjected to fierce gales and is certainly a place to walk to blow away those cobwebs. The head is unfenced and sadly has become a well-known spot for some to take their lives. If you're brave enough to stand close to the edge, you can see the Beachy Head Lighthouse. The lighthouse was built in 1902. No longer manned, its beam flashes every 20 seconds, which can be seen up to 26 miles away. On a sunny day, a boat trip is a very enjoyable way of passing an hour and offers splendid views of the cliffs and the lighthouse. Further to the west is the Bell Toot Lighthouse, erected around the beginning of the 1800s. Frequently shrouded in mist, it was eventually abandoned in 1899 when it was decided to build the existing one. There have been many owners, but the present occupiers, after a massive cliff fall, had the Bell Toot move back from the edge. Today it's a charming and most unusual bed and breakfast. A completely different use to that in the Second World War when Canadian troops used it for target practice. A 
Of the hundreds of shipwrecks along the coast, many of which were deliberately caused by luring vessels to the shore, the Nymphia Americana in the 1700s must have been the worst. Salvage from the wrecks was a good source of income, and in the unrelenting November storm, surrounding villages made their way to the beach. The vessel's liquor store was breached and both the plungers and those sent to keep the peace became intoxicated. Over 100 looters and villagers died in the mayhem. Around this time, a parson, Jonathan Darby, whose duty it was to bury the bodies washed up from shipwrecks, excavated a hole which was near the site of the Bell Toot placing lights on ledges on stormy nights. Some say he created his hole to escape from the tongue of his wife, but there's no doubt he saved many lives. Unfortunately, all traces of the parson's hole has since been washed away. Because of their whiteness, the Seven Sisters are often used in films in place of those at Dover. But our famous white cliffs are retreating. The cliffs, particularly at Burling Gap, at the end of the Seven Sisters, are softer than elsewhere, and the row of Coast Guard cottages built in the 1820s is gradually being reclaimed by the sea. The Seven Sisters are truly disappearing. For up to a metre a year, falls from the chalk cliff face, the reason why the cliffs remain so white. So it is easy to measure where the cliff face will be when our grandchildren grow old. <laughs>